Okay, welcome to 5, 5, and 5, 6. This is the inverse of the sine and inverse of the tangent functions. And remember, the inverse will always tell us the value of the angle if we already know the sine or if we already know the tangent. So here's a picture that has um, two angles uh, shown that both have the same sine value. Uh, the sine value, remember, is the um, y coordinate. So if we knew that the sine was 0.35 uh, and we wanted to try to find the angle, uh, we could put inverse sine of 0.35 in our calculator, and it would tell us um, the angle, referenced here to the normal place we reference these angles, uh, the angle uh, on the unit circle that would produce a point here that would have a y-coordinate, the sine value of 0.35, and that in your calculator is stored as 20.50. But um, realize that there's another angle over here that has the same height as this point over, uh, that's our 20.50 which is about 159.50 degrees, which is a perfectly nice angle also. So one thing you have to worry about with inverse sine functions is uh, in problems where you want some sort of obtuse angle, you have to make sure that on your own you interpret this. The calculator is always going to give you something in this quadrant over here. But uh, oftentimes what you really also want is to consider the obtuse angle as well. Okay, here's the notes you're going to get as a handout. Uh, there's some restrictions on the domain and range of inverse sine, just like there was for just like there was for cosine. Uh, the domain of I'm going to make that wider. Oh, that's cool. Oh, I can make this wider too. I can edit while I'm doing this video. That's awesome. Okay, so um, inverse sine. Of course, we got to put in a value for inverse sine. When you're putting inverse sine in your calculator, you have to make sure you enter a number between negative one and positive one because those are all the answers for sine. If you try to put in something like tell me the inverse sine of two, your calculator doesn't know what to do because there's no angle on the unit circle that produces a y coordinate of two. It's always between uh, negative one and positive one. So you gotta put one of those numbers in. And when you do that, it will give you an answer between negative 90 and positive 90. That would be in quadrants one or four if you think about it. Um, let me switch to the other document here. If you have an angle, Sorry, if you have a um, if you uh, enter in a value like you know 0 0.8 or something like that, a very high value for sine here, you're gonna get you're gonna get the angle in this quadrant. You're not gonna get the one over here in the um, quadrant two. You're not gonna get the obtuse. That's what I was saying before. You'll have to interpret that on your own if you've got a problem that you know it should have the obtuse angle. It's like the good old days when you first started using your protractor. And, you know, there's a zero here on the protractor, and then it goes 10, 20, blah, blah, blah. You get to 90, whoops, you get to 90, blah, 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 and eventually you get to 180. And on that same protractor, oh, wait, I have a picture of one. Anyway, I'll tell you this in a second. There's an inside scale, maybe it starts here at zero, 10, blah, 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 all the way back to 180 over here. And they're both 90 at the top. Uh, and so like there's a 170 here and, and you have to interpret the difference between these two angles. It's exactly the same thing here because that angle and this sort of other sister angle that will be on that side, those will be um, supplementary. And here's a protractor. It's exactly what I was just talking about. Whoops, I can't move it. Uh, it's exactly what I was just talking about. And you see how the, the protractor scale goes for, and the inside goes from 0 to 180. That would be like the, the positive value of the angle. Um, and you have sometimes two angles with the same, or one angle could have the same, you know, two measurements on the protractor. So that can happen. You have to interpret that on your own, just like you did when you were measuring angles back in fifth grade. Okay, so I was going on about um, quadrant four. Remember, this is quadrant one. This is quadrant two. Quadrant two angles are not going to show up in your calculator for inverse sine values. Neither is quadrant three. However, if you enter in, remember I said sine value can go all the way down to negative one. There's some, there's some values down here in quadrant four. Like if you put in, okay, tell me the inverse sine, tell me the angle whose sine is negative half or something. It will give you this angle down here. And it's not going to tell you, you know, 300 and some degrees. It's going to tell you negative whatever that is. This looks like it's negative, you know, 30 or something. Or negative pi over 6 if it's a, if it's a, um, a in radians. Okay, so just like for cosine, let's talk about the graph of uh, the inverse sine. Uh, here's a sine curve. Here's just one little tiny part of the sine, the sine uh, graph. Actually, let me go back to this and let's let's talk about how this how this looks. Your regular old graph of sine. I'll do it in this color. 
your regular old graph of sine looked like this. Sine started out at zero and was going up, and went on and on and on and on, and backwards was sort of the same shape. If we do, let's change color here. Let's do the inverse sine. That's like, you know, you reflect that over this, uh, this line y equals x, and you'd get a curve that would start here and go up and go something like that, and then on the other side would do that. Well, that's not a function, that whole red thing there. So they, uh, to, make this, to make this a function and to, to you know, get rid of any ambiguity about, okay, what's the sign of, you know, what angle has this sign? It would give me a value here. It would give me some values down here and here because it would be uh, different places around the circle that would have the same sign value. Uh, they have to restrict that domain so that it's not quite so crazy, which we were just talking about. So they sort of, they sort of chop it off so that only in a certain range we're going to we're going to get the answers we want let's go back to this thing uh it's chopped off here at a value i don't know if you can tell this over here but this is pi over two pi over two is the uh sort of the maximum value you ever get for for sine uh inverse sine because that would be like 90 degrees that's when the that's when the sine is about one so this is one down here on the x-axis the inverse sine of one is about pi over 2, and the inverse sine of negative 1 is about negative pi over 2. And that's the only little segment where this is defined. All the all the values for inverse sine, it's kind of like cosine, but a slightly different part of the curve. Uh, all the values for inverse sine are in this little zone, this little gray curve right here. I just put this black one in here. This is regular old sine, just so you could see uh, the original. Down here, I put the exact values in, so you can kind of think about how inverse sine works. And really, it's like an inverse, like any other inverse. Um, these are the values of the degrees. These are the uh, the values of the of the sine, actually. So I could call this, if this is my independent variable, this is a. This is the value of the inverse sine of a. So like I was just saying, the inverse sine of 1, that maximum value, is going to take us all the way up to 90, or pi over 2. And at, uh, you know, an x equals 1 in that graph above is when we're at the minimum value. And the curve goes like so in between. Uh, I, I listed that for radians, of course, also. But then here I also put... Um, you know, that first thing I was saying about be careful about the obtuse angle that is also has the same sign. Like, say we wanted to find, what's the inverse sine of a half? What's the angle whose sine is a half? Well, I'm saying here, it could be 30. Calculator is going to give you 30, but it could also be 150. 150 also has a sine of half, but 150 is not going to show up in the calculator. So if you get a problem that you know has an obtuse triangle and you end up trying to find this angle and you, you're finding an inverse sine in order to find that angle and it gives you 30, you have to say, oh, wait a minute. It, I know it's not 30, I know it's 150. Or if it gives you, you know, 28, you have to go, oh, I know it's really 152. I know it's the supplement of what the calculator is telling me. And I also did that for you in radians. All right, let's talk about uh, inverse um, tangent. This is actually 5-6, but, you know, they're very closely related. I think I have enough time here. I'm just going to do both together. Um, inverse tangent works out like inverse sine. Uh, inverse tangent turns out they're going to restrict also to quadrants 1 and 4. Um, tangent was a little different in that, if you see the graph down here, remember this, this black graph of tangent. Tangent can turn out to be anything. Tangent, the answers for tangent are not going to just be uh, between negative one and positive one. Remember tangent is like, um, tangent is the slope in um, coordinate trigonometry. So you got your unit circle here. And you're trying to find the tangent of some angle. Well, the tangent is the slope of that thing. And the slope of that thing uh, could easily be bigger than 1. Remember, it's 1 if we're talking about, say, 45 degrees. But over here, the tangent is some, it could be some huge number. It's definitely going to be greater than 1. And it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger as we get these angles over in here until it gets close to, like, positive infinity. And, and then it doesn't have a value at, um, at vertical, at 90 or negative 90. Uh, so it's greater than 1 in here, it's about 1 here, and then down in here it's less than 1. Down in here it's negative, and it kind of goes from, sorry, I guess it'd be greater than negative 1, down here and it eventually gets towards negative infinity, whereas this would have been positive infinity. And it doesn't exist at vertical. It's 0 here, this would be less than negative 1. So it's hugely positive here, and as we swing down this way it gets down to 1, goes down to 0, goes down to negative 1 here at negative 45 degrees, uh, would be negative 1, and it eventually gets down to negative infinity down here. So between here and here, in quadrants 1 and quadrants 4, 
we can speak to all the possible values of, of tangent. And they restrict, so they restrict it just like they do sine for the same reasons. Okay, so um, since tangent can be anything from positive infinity to negative infinity, the domain of inverse tangent is anything. You could put in your calculator, give me the inverse tangent of 323, and it would tell you some crazy angle that's way up here whose slope is 323. And that would be some really weird answer. But my point is it can be bigger than one. You can find the inverse tangent of 2. Remember I said you couldn't find the inverse sine of 2. Sine of 2 doesn't make sense. Or a sine value of 2 doesn't make sense. Sine value of, sorry, tangent value of 2 makes perfect sense. It's the line here, it kind of looks like this one, that might have a slope of 2. So you get some big angle that's close to 90. This angle will be really close to 90. 323 is a very steep slope. Um, so that's kind of how inverse tangent can look. So there's your um, domain for tangent. Domain is all real numbers. The range then is going to, again, come in uh, somewhere in quadrant 1 or 4. So again, if you have to make that uh, adjustment for other quadrants, you have to do it the same. You have, you have to think about the same issue. Now, it's a, it's a different adjustment. The slope of this line, this one I thought might have slope of 2, is not the same, like sine, it's not the same as an angle over here. It's the same as, you know, the same line, essentially. And that same line comes down over here. So this, this line that has a tangent of 2 uh, is the same as an angle down here that has a tangent of 2. And so uh, how to compare that, I could say, and that you had this identity a while ago. So the tangent of an angle will be the same if you just take that angle and go another half circle from there, which basically, you know, this was my angle x. I'm just going another half circle beyond that. So it's the same as the tangent of this many degrees, which would be x plus another 180, or x plus pi for in radians. So to find out the other angle, if you need it, so say you, say you need it, you knew you should be looking for a quadrant three angle, and you wanted to use inverse tangent to find that. You put in an inverse tangent, and it'll give you a first quadrant ang angle, but to convert that one, maintaining the same tangent, to the third quadrant sister of it, you're going to have to add pi, or add 180. And that's explained here in the notes. Uh, back to this graph. Um, Again, tangent, you know, it's got these branches that go over and over and over again because as we go around and around the circle, the tangents keep repeating this little cycle. Uh, the inverse tangent, this gray one here, because of the way the domain is restricted, like I was just talking about, the only branch you have to flip around is this, this central branch right here. You flip that around the inverse line and you get this thing. Now, because this was infinitely tall and up and down, this thing will stretch to infinity left and right. Because remember we said the domain is anything on inverse tangent. Anything could be the tangent, so the inverse tangent of function accepts anything. The answers you get, however, just because this thing was bounded between pi over 2 and negative pi over 2, because it doesn't exist at those two places, it doesn't, there is no tangent when there's a vertical, the answers for inverse tangent are bounded between this negative pi over 2 down here and this positive pi over 2 up here. You're never going to get an answer um, you know, outside of a quadrant one angle or a quadrant four angle. And those angles are all between negative pi over two and positive pi over two. The types of problems you're going to get in these two sections, inverse sine and inverse tangent, are really just a whole bunch of like reverse Sokotoa things. They're going to ask you, okay, what's the measure of angle A if you know that this is 10 and this is 15? Find measure of angle A. Um, and that's just a straight ahead plug in your calculator kind of thing. I mean, first of all, you got to think about what is the uh, relationship I'm going to need here, uh, and from Sokotoa, if this is the angle I'm looking for, this would be, this 10 over here would be the opposite side, and this 15 would be the adjacent side. I mean, we did this a couple days ago. So, um, all you have to do here is go, okay, I know that the tangent of A, just applying my Sokotoa straight ahead, tangent of A would be opposite over adjacent, which is 10 over 15. And to find A, then, I just have to take the inverse tangent of 10 over 15 and I'll get my angle A. And that's all there is to it. Um, there's somewhere they actually have you just, they just say, what is this value? And there's somewhere they'll say, uh, and I have to do it in the calculator. Um, there's somewhere they'll just say, find this, find this thing. And then there's a couple times where you do have to apply that, find the sister angle. Thank you for watching.